Hello, and, th and thank you again for inviting me to talk to you about some of the exciting things that have been happening here at NYU as well as in the melanoma community with the management of melanoma when it spreads to other parts of the body. So I'm going to go through my introduction slides very quickly since Dr. Berman and Dr. Hale have both touched on this. As you know, melanoma is an exceedingly increasing cancer. Um, cancer rates in, for most other cancers have leveled out as opposed to melanoma, which is continuing to rise. And again, you can see this exponential growth, very frightening. And so when do people come to see me? People come to see me, a medical oncologist, when the melanoma has either become very deep and they may want to participate in some clinical research studies, when the melanoma has gone to the lymph nodes, or the melanoma has gone to other parts of the body. And I'm going to focus my talk today on melanoma that has gone to, gone to other parts of the body because in the, for the first time in over 20 years, we now have medicines that are able to change how long patients with melanoma live. And this is a very exciting time in melanoma research. And so I want to share with you some of the exciting things that have been going on and we've been a part of. So we're, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a type of treatment called immunotherapy. And what you're going to notice this morning is that I'm not going to talk about chemotherapy. So trained as a medical oncologist, I grew up learning how to give people chemotherapy and learning how to deal with nausea, vomiting, and everything that goes with chemotherapy side effects. And now being the melanoma oncologist, I've had to change my learning patterns, and we don't give chemotherapy that often. I won't say that we don't give it. We do give it in some circumstances. But much more commonly, we give things like immunotherapy and targeted therapies. So the first thing we're going to talk about is immunotherapy. Why is immunotherapy so exciting? Well, it's exciting because it's not toxic chemotherapy. It's a medicine that tries to get your body's immune system to activate your T cells, your T cells live, live in your lymph nodes, and these T cells are essentially the surveillance types of cells in your body that are out there looking for things that don't belong. They help you fight infection, but they can also be very useful in helping to combat cancer. It not only, um, and the other important thing with immunotherapy is that it does not affect your normal body cells. So like chemotherapy, sometimes you can get hair loss, you can get nausea, you can get vomiting, um, because chemotherapy affects cells that are dividing very, very quickly. Immunotherapy is going to focus on the tumor. I'm not saying that you're not going to get side effects, but you get a different type of side effects, and I will talk about those also. So the type of immunotherapy we're going to talk about today is a medicine called CTLA-4. It's a novel monoclonal antibody, which means we have been able to take a molecule that will block a particular receptor on T cells that allows for T cells to stay activated. And I'm going to show you the cartoon of exactly how that works. So here we have what you call a T cell. Wow, that's really crummy, huh? Do we have another one? All right, we'll fake it. All right, the top. The red, damn, I can look at this and not even go blind. Um, the top cell is the red cell, is your T cell. Your T cells are the cells that are going to help you to fight off either infection or cancer. When that T cell interacts with this pretty magenta cell here called the antigen presenting cell, it triggers an immune response. And when that immune response happens, what happens is the middle picture where now your T cells become activated. They secrete what we call cytokines, or these are chemicals that stimulate more immune cells and really generate your body to start attacking. Well, T cells are very smart also. They don't like to stay overactive, because overactive T cells can cause other issues like autoimmune diseases. Well, your T cell has uh, Dr. Berman. You're all right. You always got to depend on the surgeon. He has all the toys. Not on video, right? Yeah. Well, this is, this doesn't do a good job either. You give me, he, he gave me the, the freebie he got. 
Um, so here, here you see this, this is whatever. I got the red end. Um, we work a lot together, can you tell? Um, I'm his work wife. So you have this receptor, this yellow little arrow over here that, forget it, that gets expressed on the outside of the cell. What happens when the CTLA4 little yellow Y gets expressed, that's the shutoff valve, that's the break. CTLA4 will then interact with that magenta cell and shut off and stop all the T cell activity. Well, we want to keep T cells active. We want to keep up this active attack. And so we've been able to make a medicine called a CTLA4 antibody. And this antibody will allow for continued activation of those T cells. Well, what happens when you activate T cells? Well, you get immune side effects. So what are immune side effects? I tell patients that immune side effects are anything that can cause inflammation. So itises, like dermatitis or a rash, pruritus or itching, colitis, diarrhea, thyroiditis. We can make your thyroid gland become overactive and then suddenly become underactive, and we may need to have to treat that. We can cause inflammation of the liver, inflammation of the pancreas, inflammation of the muscles. But again, this is all very short-lived, and we know how to treat those side effects. So this is a, an example of what one of the rashes from this drug can look like. One of the things that we noticed here, and I have full permission from this patient to show you his photo, is that when we get a patient who has a really great response to this immunotherapy, their immune system not only recognizes the melanoma as something that doesn't belong, but it recognizes other things that have pigment, because you have to remember, melanoma is a pigmented cancer. And so this patient's immune system has started to attack the pigment in his eyebrows. And it was actually pretty funny because this, this man is a very big joker and comes in and I said to him, oh my goodness, what'd you do to your eyebrows? And he says to me, what do you mean? I was like, you didn't notice that you got skunk tails over your eyebrows? And he says to me, doc, I swear I woke up with this. And I didn't believe him until the next time he came back. And, it, and what you can see, look at where he had his disease. He had a big tumor in his heart. He had tumor in his sinuses. He had lots and lots of disease, and I was very afraid that we weren't going to be able to help him. But after he got this immunotherapy, not only did I get rid of his melanoma, but I also turned his hair white. He's now six years out. He has absolutely no melanoma, and every single hair on his body is white. But he says that's OK, because he doesn't have melanoma. And so we've been working very hard to try and make this type of immune therapy work even better. Because although it works, it only works for about 20% of patients, which is better than zero, but not good enough. And so we have some thoughts that maybe if we can break up a tumor, and by breaking up the tumor, the tumor will allow proteins, tumor proteins, to circulate throughout the body. If we can have more proteins, tumor proteins, circulating, those may help be the homing pigeons that will help those T cells, those activated T cells, go to areas of tumor so much better than if we didn't. And we don't know if this works yet. This is one of our research projects here, and this is something that we're actively doing right now, where some patients are just going to get the medicine, and some patients are going to get the medicine where we give a little bit of radiation to one tiny tumor, not, not a whole lot of radiation, just enough to break it down where we can get some of these proteins released and see if that will help more patients have a better outcome. I bring up this medicine because this medicine last year was all over the papers after our oncology meeting. It's a medicine called PD-1. PD-1 is another way 
we've been able to use the body's immune system to recognize melanoma as something that doesn't belong. Oh, what did I do? I leaned on the computer. Okay. Why is this important? Because, like I said, the ipilimumab or medicine, the CTLA-4 medicine that we give can help about 20% of people. It looks like PD-1 may be able to help 40% of people. And so that's even more exciting. Well, stay tuned, wait till you hear what's gonna come out in June because we've been able to take this PD-1 medicine and this CTLA-4 medicine called IPI and put them together. And much to our excitement, because it's not, it's not proven yet, but it looks like when you put the two together, you actually add up their benefits, and it looks like we're helping more than 50% of patients. So this is exceedingly exciting. If we can help cure 50%, and I, I, that word slipped out, because I don't ever tell a melanoma patient they're cured. I tell them that they can have remission for the rest of their life, because I don't trust melanoma as far as I can throw it. And so although I may have many patients who have no melanoma for years and years and years, I never give them that C word. And they always want me to give them the C word. And I said, when they come to my retirement party, I'm gonna hand them all out a piece of paper that says the C word. And that's the only time I'm gonna tell them that they were cured. So let's talk about some other types of therapies like pathway inhibitors. So what are pathway inhibitors? Well, we've gotten pretty smart about figuring out how to help the body's immune system, but we've also gotten pretty smart about how to figure out what are the genetics, what are the things that actually drive melanoma to go to other parts of the body. So I'm gonna show you this crazy silly slide here that makes absolutely no sense and gives you a headache, but it shows that there is lots of different ways, thank you very much, Dr. Berman, have a nice day. <laughs> um, there's lots of different pathways that melanoma knows how to use in, other, in order to spread to other parts of the body. However, we've been able to identify one particular pathway. Oh, here, this pathway, well, for what it was worth. The RAS-RAF pathway, the big yellow box is here. And we know that almost 60% of patients, between 50 and 60% of patients who have melanoma that goes to other parts of their body, their tumors will develop a mutation or an alteration in that pathway. And we've been able to identify that mutation as a BRAF, a BRAF mutation. Fortunately, we've also been able to make drugs that target that mutation. Well, if the mutation is required for the melanoma to go to other parts of the body, and we shut off that mutation, it's like taking the key out of your car. You don't have the key, the car doesn't start. If you take the key out of your car, guess what, the car shuts down. That's what happens if you have a BRAF mutation and we give you a BRAF medicine. The tumors shut down very quickly, they can get better, they can even disappear. What we've also learned is that many patients will get a lot of benefit from this medicine, but sometimes their melanomas can get smart. And if they get smart, they usually get smart pretty quick, usually within the first six, six, to, six months to a year. And so we're also looking to see, is it going to be better for us to give two blockers? Block with BRAF, but block one of these other pathways. And that, again, is some of the research that we're doing to see if two blockers are better than one, but yet there are many patients who take one blocker and they're fine. So this is, this is a little bit about the BRAF uh, inhibitor. We talked a little bit about that. And again, side effects, not at all like chemotherapy, side effects are very unique. And so you can have rash and itching. You can have joint pain. You can have muscle pain. Um, this is just, this is what we do to identify whether or not you have the mutation. We actually take your tumor and we 
take the DNA right from the tumor and look to see if it has a mutation. And what's important to know is that the mutations that occur within these tumors are not genetic mutations that you can give to your family. Because a lot of patients will say to me, oh my goodness, should I have my family checked for this mutation? And the answer is no. It's a mutation that occurs primarily and only within that tumor. And this is, this is a cartoon of, again, how we block that pathway. You block the pathway and the melanoma can shrink up and die. So there are two medicines. One is available right now. There's another medicine that will be available called dibrafenib that should be available in June. And these are both medicines that block this pathway for patients who have BRAF mutations within their tumors. So this was some of the research that we did here. And all of the lines that go down are people who got benefit, which is very unusual for melanoma because I've been doing this here for 15 years. And most of the time, the lines are on top saying, yeah, keep trying, keep looking. You're not doing so good. You've only helped about 5% of people and not majority of the patients. And because everybody else showed you gross tumors, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be right if I didn't show you some disgusting pictures. Um, so these pink little nodules are melanoma tumor nodules on someone's chest wall. He had a BRAF mutation, and 14 days later, that's what his chest looked like. So you still see the scar area where the tumors were, but those nodules are gone. And so people say, yeah, well, that's really nice, but what happens if my melanoma is inside? Well, this is another diagram where this is a CAT scan of uh, somebody's liver. And these, these big things here, those are melanoma tumors in somebody's liver. And as you can see, now you've got much more normal liver. The melanoma tumors, the black big spots, continue to get smaller. And many times, the improvement happens gradually, and as long as it keeps getting better, it's a good thing. You keep taking that medicine. This is a PET scan. A PET scan essentially is an outline of your body, and we give you something called radioactive sugar or radioactive FDG, fluorodioxyglucose. Why? Because tumors are metabolizing so quickly they eat up the sugar. And so things that light up, well, let me tell you, your brain's supposed to light up, because if your brain doesn't light up, there's a problem. <laughs> um, but other things that use sugar very quickly are tumors. And so this, I really wish I had some technology. Um, this spot right up on somebody's neck, see the black spot up there? That's a melanoma tumor. Look at the patient's leg. All those black spots are melanoma tumors. Look, day 15, so only 14 days later. This is how quickly this medicine will work for patients. Look at how much better. The spot in the neck, gone. The spots on the legs, not gone, but drastically better. I talked to you about MEK inhibitors because this is one of the other pathways that we're looking at to see if we give this drug with a BRAF drug, can we make the effect even better, and can we make it last even longer? And the answer is, we think so. So we're hoping to get one of these drugs available this summer, and so for, we may be able to give patients two blockers, hoping to outfox the fox so the melanoma doesn't get smart and learn how to grow around the BRAF drug, we'll give two blockers. And we talked a little bit about this. So what's my conclusion? My conclusion is that the only way that we're going to be able to move forward and really make a difference in melanoma is through research. And I have my, my patients and all of my colleagues here to thank for sending me those patients. But it's really the patients who understand that what we have available might be good, but we can do better. And this is why people participate in research. And this is why we work so hard to do research here is because we want to take this from a disease that only gets better 5% to 10% of the time and make it a disease that gets better 90% of the time. Because I want to be able to have a retirement party at the Waldorf 
and hand out lots of pieces of paper that have the C word on them. So thank you.